You're getting sued. As a doctor, this is one of the worst things you could hear. Something else that you never want to hear is you're facing an IRS audit. Now, I understand that these can be quite a bit of an inconvenience, but it's usually not much more than that. Luckily, the chances are high that it'll never happen. But as you're probably aware, the IRS is in the process of getting some major additional funding it's been waiting for. The Inflation Reduction Act calls for delivering almost $80 billion, with a B, $80 billion to the IRS over the next 10 years. Doesn't sound too much like inflation reduction, does it? Now, in this video, we're going to highlight why you might get audited, the three types of audits, the audit process timeline, and steps to take in case you get audited. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Jeff Anzalone, a periodontist on a mission to get you out of the rat race with passive income streams. Do me a favor, download the free passive income guide below the video. Let's start off by talking about the two main reasons why you may get audited. So you get the letter in the mail from the IRS. You open it, hoping that it doesn't say that what we always dread when we open the letter. Unfortunately, you've been selected for an IRS audit. Immediately, your first thought is, what have I done wrong? The IRS website actually tells us that when they send us a letter, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've done something wrong or that there's a problem. Two main possibilities that you actually might get selected for an audit are this. The first one is random selection and computer screening. So occasionally you may be chosen through this random selection process, which is based on a statistical formula. In this situation, the IRS compares tax returns against the norms for similar returns. They develop these norms from audits of a random sample of returns. And if yours doesn't follow these norms, then guess what? You could be chosen for an audit. That's number one. Number two is something called related examinations. So, that, so the IRS may select your returns when they involve issues or transactions with other taxpayers whose returns were also selected for an audit as well. Examples may include any business partners that you have or any investors that you've worked with in the past. Some other reasons that you may be audited are in the process of claiming home office deductions. If you have a major income change or change in deductions from the previous year, rental losses, math errors, if you have several years of missing returns, if you use your personal car for business, and if you are trying to claim or essentially claim too many charitable deductions. All right, next thing I want to address is how common is it to get audited? So now that the IRS has access to, or is gonna have access to an extra $80 billion, I'm willing to bet that we're gonna see the audit rates go up. So if you take a look back at 2020, Americans filed around 157 million individual tax returns and the IRS completed 509,917 audits. So if you take these numbers, your overall odds of being audited are roughly 0.3% or three out of 1,000 people. So this is actually down from the 0.6%, which when you looked at the 2017 numbers, which at that time, 0.6% was the lowest number that it had been in 15 years. So it seems that you have a better chance of living to 100 than getting audited by the IRS. Now, typically individuals that earn over a million dollars a year and those with income from a sole proprietorship, rental properties, partnerships, et cetera, typically they have a little bit higher chance of being audited. So speaking of audit, let's talk about the three types of audits there are out there. And they basically depend on the level of severity as well. So as we previously discussed, most of these audits aren't very serious with more than three fourths of them are actually completed through the mail. So let's talk about the three types. So the first one is something called the correspondence audit. Now this type of audit tends to be the most basic type. They involve uh, smaller technical tax issue issues, such as when the IRS finds a small error on your return and asks you to basically explain it through the mail. The, basically the goal of these is a quick resolution to a minor tax problem through mail correspondence and or by the phone. Second one is something called an office audit. 
Office audits are in-person that are conducted at the office of a local IRS uh, agent. They're typically appropriate when the issues are actually too large for an audit by mail, but not large enough for the one we're getting ready to discuss, the field audit. Most of these involve issues with Schedule A, C, or E, such as itemized deductions, business profit and loss, rental income expenses. Normally a single issue in one of these categories, these, these three schedules, typically automatically will trigger an audit. And the third one is something called the, the field audit. And of the three types of audits, this one is actually the most severe, but it's also the least common. It's also the type that most people associate when they think about being audited. So these are conducted at your home or business by, by an agent only for returns that, re that actually raise questions or have multiple issues needing further explanations. Sound like a lot of fun, right? So the field audit may actually last from anywhere from one day to a week or longer, depending on the size and complexity of the taxpayer's business. When the agent arrives to perform the audit, they'll generally review the financial records and then they'll interview. And then they'll, if you have employees, they'll interview them about key operations of the business if applicable. And then if you have a business, they'll actually tour the business facilities again, if applicable. So, Next question we should address is, what should you do if you get an IRS tax notice? So if you get this, that, that the IRS is planning to audit you, then they will always contact you by mail or telephone, but they'll, they'll never email you, okay? Now remember, don't get bent out of shape if you get this, because again, this does not mean that you've done anything wrong, okay? Make sure you read through the entire notice and you follow the instructions very carefully as normally you have 30 days to respond to an audit notice. Typically, this notice will inform you, number one, why you're being audited in the first place, what you're being audited for, and then the type, the, the how you're being audited. So for example, if you're, if you're facing a correspondence audit by the mail, then they may provide the documents that they're requesting, plus they're going to want you to maybe answer some follow-up questions regarding your return, okay? That could be the correspondence to the mail. On the other hand, if you're, if you're facing one of these in-person field audits, it'd be wise to get in touch with your CPA that actually prepared the return in question. It'd also be a good idea to consult with the tax attorney. Now, the notice will also contain the specific information to be examined and what supplementary documents that you may need to present while they're at your home or business. You'll want to provide them with the copies, not the originals. So before the audit, it's a good idea to get all the paperwork organized and the documents that you plan on submitting that pertain to the year that is undergoing the audit. And let's move on to the next uh, frequently asked question, and it is this, who gets audited the most? So according to the data, there's actually two types of taxpayers that are more likely to face a tax audit. And that's basically the rich and the poor. Let me explain. So in the past, the IRS audit trends, they tend to vary by the taxpayer income. So when you look at the poor, so those with incomes actually below $25,000 a year, they actually have an audit rate of 0.69%, which is more than 50% higher then the overall audit rate. And then you, then you have you know, what they're claiming to be the rich taxpayers with incomes of $500,000 a year or more. They, they also have a higher than average audit rate as well. But the overall tax audit rates have actually dec declined across all income levels, especially for taxpayers with incomes of 200,000 or more. Again, this is all in the past. This is, this is before they just passed this act, which is gonna be giving more money to the IRS. We'll just have to wait and see actually what comes of that. Next question we need to address is, how long does this tax audit, this whole process take? So generally the entire audit period shouldn't take more than five to six months to complete. Occasionally, they can be resolved quicker if you're, if you're well prepared. On the other hand, there are a handful of factors that can prolong the audit, such as if you're a small business owner, if there are many changes that need to be made on your return, if the IRS actually starts to pursue penalties, and 
if you don't agree with the auditor's adjustments. So overall, the research shows that the IRS audit timeline is roughly around 26 months after the due date of the tax return or the date it was, it was filed, whichever one is later. Last but not least, what is the IRS looking for during an audit? So there are several reasons why somebody may get audited, but the IRS mainly looks for potential tax revenue that was not reported on the tax returns. This comes in two forms. Number one, typically the income was understated. And number two, the deductions were actually overstated. So, so because the IRS does not have the resources to audit everyone's return, it therefore sets priorities based on certain factors about the information reported in the return and also the person who filed it. So are you at this point facing an audit? So I can understand trying to deal with an audit on your own. It can be a terrifying experience. So whether you're facing an audit or if the IRS has issued penalties on your return, then it would be a good idea to contact a tax professional, whether it's your accountant, a tax attorney, or both. Many times an experienced tax attorney can actually save you from some of the different fines and penalties associated with an audit. So if you're wanting more tax information regarding audits or saving in taxes in general, then I want you to check out my interview that I had with one of the top tax advisors in the country. Also, Rich Dad Poor Dad's Robert Kiyosaki's personal CPA, Tom Wheelwright. You can check out the interview right here. I'll see you at the interview.